VCY America presents Crosstalk, a nationwide call-in program discussing issues that have an effect on our families, our communities, our churches, our nation, and our world. Crosstalk, an opportunity for you to voice your concerns for biblical principles. And now live by satellite and around the world on the Internet at vcyamerica.org. Here is today's Crosstalk. And thank you for joining us on Crosstalk today here on the VCY America Network. Well, the nation and, yes, uh, even the world is a buzz about the uh, declaration that President Obama made yesterday as it relates to his support of the redefining of marriage. Uh, we're going to be taking a look at that and many related issues as the LGBT agenda advances. Joining us today on Crosstalk is Dr. Paul Cameron, the chairman of the Family Research Institute. He's a frequent lecturer and author of, of over 90 scientific articles and five books, including The Gay 90s and Exposing the AIDS Scandal. Uh, in 1985, he was nominated by the national gay magazine The Advocate as the most dangerous man in America. But uh, 2005, they downgraded him as public enemy number two. Uh, he has served as a medical and social psychological uh, expert in numerous court cases across the country, including dozens of child custody cases involving a homosexual parent. And Dr. Cameron, thanks for joining us today on Crosstalk. My pleasure. Uh, yesterday, as you know, the, the president came out, uh, announced he is now supportive of redefining marriage so that two people of the same sex could join together and call that a marriage. Uh, the Associated Press called his gay marriage support as world precedent as the United States is a global leader. Uh, Dr. Cameron, what is your response to the president's hastily called interview yesterday on this very issue? Well, uh, I'm afraid that his, uh, that is our president's, uh, announcement is no great surprise. After all, at the United Nations, starting uh, as soon as he got in office, actually, uh, both Hillary Clinton and the rest of the cadre of uh, ambassadors started um, plumping for gay rights and uh, threatening uh, African and Asian countries with loss of funds if they did not allow gay marriage, and also did not enact gay rights. I wish we were all alone, but uh, the European Union has done essentially the same thing. So um, this is a trend right now that uh, our best and brightest, that is our, generally our graduates from the best schools and thinking the, the biggest thoughts, say, hey, let's do it. We've got a wealthy society here, and fairness demands, and blah, blah, blah. Hmm. Well, many thought that the president would really wait to make this announcement until, I mean, everybody, many people were expecting such an announcement, but not until after the November election, so as not to be so polarizing. Uh, yet we saw Vice President Biden come out Sunday on this issue, and then the, the uh, head educator, the Secretary of Education, uh, came out uh, on Monday supporting same-sex marriage. Uh, do you think that uh, President Obama, was he just under great pressure to make this declaration yesterday? Uh, what's your thoughts on the timing of this? Well, the timing is, I think, miserable for his reelection. Uh, I would have uh, expected him, as you did, to wait until he was uh, the new president and say, uh, guess what? I've changed my mind or I've evolved. But homosexuality is the one sin or the one uh, habit that is 24-7. It is homosexuality all the time. And actually, uh, while I'm not sure about the claims by the various people who have, uh, who have reported that Obama has at least participated at times with them in homosexual acts, uh, this certainly lends some credence. Whatever. Um, we, we are in a society that's so wealthy, we can get away with doing all kinds of things for a while. The argument you hear all the time is, oh, the sun will come up tomorrow. And, of course, that's undoubtedly true, as near as we can tell. But uh, even wealthy societies can go awry. Uh, Rome eventually, though it was the wealthiest uh, uh, society on the planet, uh, eventually wore itself out and didn't produce enough children. Western society as a whole, Western civilization, is now below replacement level on children. And many of our trading partners are on the verge of disappearing, literally, to half their size in about 35 years. Hmm. So um, you can't mess with reproduction 
and not have consequences. Look at China. China said, gee, we've read these uh, real smart books by real smart people, and they say, you've got too many kids. We've got to get rid of them. So they went to a one-child policy. Well, China's now having difficulty digging out from that. Because once you get a whole generation reared with the idea that, well, for the good of the planet and for the good of my own career, one kid's it, uh, it's very hard to get it stoked up again. And here in the West, I think the major invention, one that is driving us and we have been unable to conquer yet or master, is the pill. The pill has made sexuality essentially free. You don't have to worry, not much, about getting pregnant. And that means the men can have sex, the women can have sex. And I think, in a way, this actually drives even the acceptance of the gay movement. Because people say, well, if I don't have any responsibility to maintain the future, uh, these guys obviously don't either, but uh, we both like sex. There's a little bit different. In fact, it's kind of yucky, but still... Uh, I can see their argument. Dr. Cameron, um, Michelle Obama has been traveling the country promoting her Let's Move campaign, uh, promoting diet, promoting exercise. She's uh, supposedly concerned by the health of the nation, and President Obama has been very, very supportive of this. Does it seem kind of ironic to you that the president and his wife are very concerned about people eating healthy, dictating school lunch menus for children, while at the same time ignoring the unhealthy homosexual lifestyle? That's one of the incredible uh, look pasts that the Obamas are doing. And of course, our ruling class is doing the same. Now, you're part of it. I'm not saying everybody but if you look at what is coming from academia and the media as a whole, uh, it's very selective uh, kinds of picking on uh, certain activities. Uh, remember, just 10 years ago, it was global warming. My goodness, every sacrifice had to be made because that was going to kill us all. That's passing now, I think. The, uh, the odds of anybody getting anything serious done in regard to this scare are pretty low. Uh, the obesity epidemic is, um, oh, gee, come on. Uh, people eat because they like to eat food. And we have, we're Americans, we have gobs of food, and it's cheap. And we are proving that freedom sometimes leads uh, to un untoward consequences. In the Soviet Union, when it crashed, um, vodka became cheap. Um, Russian men have proven that they have a hard time living with freedom. They've actually reduced their lifespan by four years just by drinking too much. So maybe we're doing the same. How can we then, how can we say, oh, this ep obesity epidemic, boy, it may take a year or two off your life. If you look at homosexuality, the net effect of that has to be somewhere at least 7 to 10 years and maybe as many as 20 years off of your lifespan. Not to mention one primarily a uh, gay disease, AIDS, costs us now $700,000 per person infected. And we know that somewhere in the vicinity of one out of every five, one out of every six gays is infected. That is, on the hoof. These fellas who are enjoying, I'm sure, whatever it is they do, uh, I don't want to get into the nasty stuff here, mm -hmm. but uh, they're carrying around a bill for us, a bill that we and our children are going to have to pay, $700,000 a piece. Now, that's just for the medical and so forth, uh, the, the, the cost to society. Um, why isn't Michelle Obama, why isn't the president worried about that? Well, obviously, because... They're Democrats. The Democrats have sold their souls to the notion that uh, there are all kinds of good people in the world, gays, uh, abortionists, um, pill pushers of varying sorts. Um, that's politics, and I hope, uh, and I think there's a good chance that Obama's going to get smacked down for this one. He's, he's going to Maybe he said, I'm going to lose the presidency anyway. Um, maybe I should just go for it now and see what happens. Hmm. 
Well, his announcement uh, came just a day after North Carolina uh, voted overwhelmingly to put their uh, in in their constitution that marriage is between one man and one woman, North Carolina being now the uh, 30, uh, 31st state to do so. Uh, the nation sounds pretty strong on this issue that when it comes to voting, the people support one man, one woman marriage. Now, we've seen activist judges have brought same-sex marriage in some states. So uh, give us your perspective on North Carolina one day passing this overwhelmingly and the next day this announcement coming out. And we're seeing the majority of states uh, certainly that have brought this up to a vote. The people continue to reaffirm marriage as one man and one woman. Yeah, that's pretty much the case. Of course, most of the states that we're talking about, uh, with the exception of California, are states that Obama was not going to win anyway. And, um, of course, he kind of needed North Carolina. He needed Virginia. I think those are two states that he may just have lost with his announcement. Now, I'm not saying that he would have carried them in any case, but at least North Carolina, he had a shot. Now, uh, I don't think he has any shot at North Carolina, maybe at Virginia. Uh, this is, um, uh, if you look at politicians who are homosexual, what you notice is they seem to have time only for one big thing, and that's homosexuality, their taste, their habit. They'll do other things if they have to, but it seems they are just only interested in this. This, this is it for them. Um, uh, as I said, this is kind of funny on Obama's part, because uh, by and large, he's shown himself a pretty good tactician. This just doesn't make any sense if he really wants to become two-time president. Maybe he doesn't. <laughs> I think he's well, just committed suicide. S- some have said that this he reacted out of protecting this gap from Joe Biden, doing this on, on Sunday in the Se- Secretary of Education. Uh, do you think this is in response to a gaff or something else driving the, his decision yesterday? I, I can't see this as a, being a response to a gaff. Biden's always running around with his foot in his mouth, usually two okay. feet. So... Um, I don't know about the uh, the Secretary of Education. I don't know what uh, led him, although if he's involved in homosexuality, that would explain it. If you'll look at many of the homosexual appointees by Obama, and he's got a gob of them, you will notice that they spend a great deal of time uh, agonizing about and funding homosexual causes. Uh, think, things are getting pretty interesting in the United States. Right now, uh, most Christians are probably fairly nominal in regard to their Christianity, but uh, Obama is going to push them and maybe make them uh, make some choices. Are you going to be a sophisticated person and go along with the media, or are you going to live up to your faith? I, I guess we'll find out. And yet he uses his faith and actually used uh, the the uh, uh, Sermon on the Mount or the Golden Rule yesterday, uh, in essence, Scripture, to justify his changing his position. Yeah, he's a politician. Uh, I think he's uh, no one takes him seriously as far as the logic. After all, Jesus never brought this up as something we're supposed to do as his followers. Yeah. He certainly did, though, affirm marriage as being with uh, one man and one woman. Okay, we're going to take a quick 60-second break. Dr. Paul Cameron is our guest here today, and uh, we'll be back with more discussion as, as well as some alarming news from the state of California. We'll be right back. This is Crosstalk. Back to Genesis with Dr. John Morris creation author and scientist with the Institute for Creation Research. Dr. Morris, during hypnosis, what happens to a person's mind? Chris, much onstage hypnotism is due to pranks and tricks, but some of it does seem to be real. Of the real kind, it's well known that some people are resistant to hypnotism while others are easy. Recently, both types were studied using brain scan technology. The easily hypnotized subjects had interruptions in regions of the brain used for advanced planning. It thus impairs the ability to plan ahead and likewise enables people to do what they normally couldn't do. While there's much I don't understand, hypnotism at best decreases brain activity and as such I think it's dangerous. How much better to recognize that man is created in the image of God and that these traits and abilities are to be guarded and used wisely. And that's the back to Genesis truth as I see it. For free information on creation, visit us on the web at www.icr.org.
You're listening to Crosstalk on BCY America. With us today is Dr. Paul Cameron, the chairman of the Family Research Institute. And uh, we're talking about the, uh, well, the advancement of the LGBT agenda now with the president giving sway and making his declaration yesterday that he is supportive of the redefining of marriage so that two people of the same sex can join together and call that a marriage. Uh, uh, Dr. Cameron, uh, we're going to focus in on California in a moment, but uh, uh, there's a group called the Fair Foundation that uh, did a study on the amount of monies that we spend as a nation. Uh, it comes comes from the research money uh, budgeted per death by the National Institutes of Health and found it very, very interesting that whereas uh, per death of something like uh, cardiovascular diseases like heart and stroke, whereby uh, the nation spends in research uh, approximately uh, just over $2,400 per death, that when it comes to HIV AIDS, we are spending uh, over $225,000 per death. Yes. Uh, what we have is a ruling class that says the most important people, the people who ought to have the most rights and most protections, is not everybody but gays. And uh, they're starting to sidle into saying, and people who think they're the opposite sex and want to be clipped and snipped and call themselves uh, transgender or whatever. This is a weird, weird situation, any way you cut it. Uh, Fifty years ago, these are the people who were at the bottom of our social system. They were confused. They weren't contributing. Uh, clearly, uh, two or three or a dozen homosexuals can get together and uh, work at uh, making a child but cannot do it, whereas our very future depends on having kids. That's why we have benefits for married people. It's not because they love one another. Ah, that's nice if they do, but the important thing is that they produce kids and that they stay with those kids, raise those kids, give us a future. Homosexuals weren't doing that. And then when it came to people who want to be clipped and snipped and wear the opposite sex clothing and so forth, uh, others looked at them as, well, oh, it's weird, just stay away from me and uh, uh, do whatever you're going to do, but don't do it around me. Well, today... We have, uh, for instance, the Equal Employment uh, Opportunity Commission uh, making noises as though they're going to say, in fact, that uh, civil rights legislation demands that people who have transgender desires have more rights than you do. Wow, more rights in the sense that you say, I don't want to be around them. As somebody that's as confused about life as to not know which sex they are, I don't want them around uh, my kids. I don't want them driving my bus. I, I just don't want to be around these people. Uh, in fact, the weight of law could come on and say, well, friend, you don't have the freedom of speech anymore because you're saying bad things about our favored victims. Friend, you don't have the right to freedom of association anymore. Because our friends, these poor victims who are troubled about their sexuality, want to be employed by you. They want to teach your kids. They want to ba babysit your kids. And if you don't do that, by George, we're going to fine you until you are out of money. Hmm. Well, and that's exactly what we're seeing happen in the state of Kansas right now, for instance, is uh, equality, a, a so-called equality group is going community by community and and uh, uh, going before city councils demanding that they change their uh, non-discrimination statutes. Uh, Salina, Kansas is being targeted right now. There's the, their uh, city council voting this coming Monday, and, and Hutchinson, Kansas has a vote on Tuesday on this, Wichita, Pittsburgh. All have been targeted, Manhattan, Kansas, um, in which they do, are doing just exactly what you're talking about, Dr. Cameron, is these new special rights given to those who don't know whether they're male or female. Yes, and part of this is uh, exchanging what used to be a kind of a, a quasi-Christian consensus, say around the 1950s. You had a society in the United States that was um, obviously Christian, uh, there were uh, dissenters about just what Christianity meant here and there, but I don't think anybody disagreed that Christianity said, well, God made people the way they are, and if they don't like it, they're going to have to live with it, or um, <laughs> I don't know, go somewhere else. And now we have a situation where psychiatry 
which knows how to do very little, I might add, which knows uh, how to fix very few things, is being given the driver's seat, being told, well, you are our new religion. You are our new gurus. Not the pastors of yore, not the priests of yore, but, but you guys. Tell us what we should do. And, of course, the model to which psychologists and psychiatrists are used is um, somebody comes into my shop, uh, somebody pays their bill, and I spend time with them, uh, usually uh, uh, listening to them and doing uh, their bidding for a considerable amount of time. Well, now this is being writ large as though our whole society is a psychiatric shop, a big clinic in which each of us is expected to pay the bill for distressed people who are now the center of attention. Psychiatrists, yeah, we expect them to center in on people who are disturbed. But now they say, oh, no, 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 these, these are our clients. They're not disturbed. These are swell folk. And, in fact, you are disturbed if you will not go along with us. Well, um, back in the old days, we're talking about 60 years ago, uh, sometimes people felt uh, that Christianity and uh, the priesthood and the, and the, uh, the pastorhood uh, were oppressive, and perhaps they were. But still, uh, society went on as it had, and people knew what their rights were, and people who were disturbed pretty well had a lower ranking. Today, in the name of these new priests, we're getting a situation in which the disturbed become the princes of our society, and we become the slaves to make sure we pay for whatever they want. Just yesterday, Argentina passed a law which apparently is going to go into effect, that requires that anybody who says, you know what, I'm an Argentinian and I need an operation. I want to have my uh, genitalia snipped and clipped and blah, blah, blah. Well, by a unanimous vote, uh, their parliament went along with it, said, yep, that's the law in Argentina. So everybody in Argentina, the taxpayer, is going to have to be, uh, so to speak, a uh, contributor to people who are whacked out enough to literally want to have their uh, you're talking their sterile, sterile, stuff, yeah, uh, sterilization and, is what you you're know, talking whatever. about here. Yeah, uh, Doctor Cameron, let's let's go to the state of California. There is uh, consideration of a bill right now, California Senate Bill Number Eleven Seventy Two, uh, that would make it illegal for therapists, psychologists, counselors, and parents to engage in any kind of sexual orientation change efforts against children 18 and younger. Uh, Violators would be subject to arrest, fines, uh, even possible jail time. And unbelievably, this this bill passed out of a legislative committee uh, Tuesday, 5-3 to vote, uh, would also require adults to sign a consent form before they could seek therapy or counseling to change their sexual orientation. Uh, Brad Dacus there at the Pacific Justice Institute uh, has pledged that he's going to challenge the constitutionality of this if it gets out of the legislature. But uh, he said this bill would even target uh, uh, well, this what's called reparative therapy, but it could also lead to parents losing custody of their children to the state if they seek therapy for their youngsters. Uh, uh, give us your take on what's going on in the state of California with this uh, Senate Bill 1172. Well, first of all, it's clearly an assault on freedom of association and freedom of speech. And it's also an assault on parental authority. You have a kid. He's 13. And let's say he's gender confused or he's confused about homosexuality. You say, oh my, both of these conditions are, uh, both of these habits or situations or things that could kill my child, that could certainly reduce his lifespan, give him all kinds of diseases. I want to do something to help him. Well, this bill would essentially say, no, no, you're the parent, but we are the legislators. We will tell you what you must do. If your kid gets into drugs, you can take them to a therapist or whatever, but not if they get into homosexuality, not if they're interested in having their genitals whacked. Uh, who is the legislature? I think this is obviously unconstitutional. On the other end of it, 
the therapy that's offered, uh, rest- uh, restorative therapy or reorientation therapy, doesn't work very well. It works some of the time, just as counseling kids regarding, say, uh, drug use works some of the time. It's worth a shot. Usually when a kid, if they're 14 or 15 and they, they say, I want to blah, 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 um, the odds are good they're going to blah, blah, blah. Sorry about that. Wish it were otherwise. But it's untoward to think that the legislators are going to say, we're just going to bar that because many of us in the legislature are homosexuals. We're offended to think that people don't want to become or don't want their kids to become just what we are. Well, I'm sorry. <laughs> that's, that's part of the price we pay uh, as voters for putting these, um, what I would call, uh, strange folk uh, in leadership positions. And I am also concerned, though, about the impact on the church. I mean, certainly we believe in the power of God to change a life. Scripture talks about uh, uh, the, the immoral lifestyles of some and then says, and such were some of you, but now you are washed, you're clean, you're justified. And uh, through counseling that comes when one uh, gives heed to what Scripture says in this regard, certainly change happens. Uh, it happens regularly we see many former homosexuals today and we see the power of God and this legislation would put a muzzle on pastors in that regard wouldn't it it might it's hard to say just how far this would go it's uh, I've read the law and it's ambiguous enough I don't think it reaches into the family unit but it might uh, remember uh, senator or not senator Clinton uh, Secretary of State Clinton gave an address uh, just about six months ago in which she seemed to indicate that the federal government was going to be concerned about any parents who tried to dissuade their children from getting into homosexuality or transgenderness. Now, that's just a vague threat. Nothing like that is going to happen on the federal level, at least in the foreseeable future. But the states is where we get this kind of legislation. And even as the states do, and I think rightly, take children away at times from parents that abuse drugs, from parents that tan too much, you know, all that kind of stuff, uh, the state of California could possibly say, well, we think there's enough evidence here that we're just going to take whip kids away from uh, anyone who says uh, nay, nay to kids getting into homosexuality or wanting to get clipped and snipped. So um, I think it's a monstrous assault on what it means to be an American. Uh, Government is just too, too big and is overreaching. Uh, Overreaching is too mild a word. It's just expanding exponentially to, to look at everything we do from the way we what light bulbs we use to the toilet, the water we flush with to and now this. Uh, we almost need a second American revolution that mm. shrinks uh, the reach of both state and federal government. But that's Do- a different issue. <laughs> Dr. Cameron with us here today. We're going to open our phone lines. If you'd like to react to the president's announcement yesterday, the advances that are going on in promoting LGBT, this legislation pending in California right now, our number 800-733-9829. That's 800-733-9829. This is Crosstalk on the VCY America Network. Perhaps you're a person that is active on the issues of today. And while these things are necessary, there is nothing more important than your personal relationship to Jesus Christ. Have you met Him as your personal Savior? All the issues we face on earth pale in comparison to the real issue of your relationship to God. What really matters is eternity, and we hope that you're ready for it. I'd like to send you a brochure that is absolutely free. This will help you to consider this very important matter. It's entitled, Where Will You Spend Eternity? It's brief, it's to the point, and it helps you to understand the urgency of having a personal relationship to Jesus Christ. If you'd like to receive a free copy of this pamphlet, right now pick up your phone and call 800-729-9829 and ask for the brochure. That's 800-729-9829. Call now.
You're listening to Crosstalk on VCY America. We're speaking today with Dr. Paul Cameron, the chairman of the Family Research Institute. And uh, Dr. Cameron, before we take our phone calls here, uh, you have a website where people can, our listeners can obtain more information about your organization? Sure. FamilyResearchInst.org, or just Google me, Paul Cameron, and you'll get to it. Okay. We have all kinds of good stuff on the website, especially if you're interested in sexuality and homosexuality. Family Research Inst. That's I N S T dot org. Right. And uh, you can obtain more information there. Let's go to the lines. We have uh, Stephen. I'm sorry, uh, Bartholomew, calling in from Salina, Kansas. And go ahead. You're on the air. Hey, Jim. Thanks for taking my call. Uh, God bless you for having this uh, guest on today. Yeah, I'm in one of those cities in Kansas that uh, that's going to be having a vote here on the special protections for the uh, homosexuals and the transgenders. Um, I just want to let you guys know and all the audience know that that communities are listening and they are responding. We are we are voting. You know, look at North Carolina yesterday. We are we are waking up. Uh, these people are trying to use the law, you know, to circumvent the will of the people in order to get these things passed. And what we need to do is keep showing up at the polls. We keep showing up at community meetings. Anytime we hear this stuff going on, we as citizens have got to combat this. And uh, I'll hang up and take your comment off the air. Great. Thank you. And Dr. Cameron, uh, basically what he's saying, uh, you know, we've been asleep too long. We've been hitting the snooze button, and it's, 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 we're starting to wake up to this issue. Uh, are, are you finding that nationwide, or are you concerned about apathy and an indifference on this matter? Well, first of all, I'm concerned about apathy, but I'm more concerned about the fact that uh, the uh, higher educational system is churning out teachers who are filled with lies. They don't know it, generally speaking, but they've gotten a mass of misinformation, such as homosexuality is just as healthy as heterosexuality. Oh, homosexual parents make just as good, maybe even better parents than normal parents, and stuff like this. These are abject, total frauds. But if you poll the kids coming out of uh, ed school, you'll find that most of them believe this PAP. And that PAP gets translated into the, the uh, eardrums, at least, of our own kids. So, yes, it's important what the, the caller called about. You know, yes, we've got to get rid of uh, a lot of these guys that are uh, uh, making our, our children's lives to be miserable. Uh, vote them out of office. Get rid of the bums. But we've also got to think in terms of why are we in this situation? Why, how have we gotten to this point? And that, by the way, is what we are about at Family Research Institute. We actually publish in the scientific literature on these very issues. We actually go and testify, not as just opinions, but as marketers of scientific facts to legislators all across the world. And, of course, courts. Let's go next to Waukesha, Wisconsin. Ray, you're on the air. Well, I'll just tell you this. I, you know, you know, they gave blacks equal rights, and that was the bad path, and now look where we are. You know, if I, if I, if I don't feel like I want to hire a black man for my business, I'm in all sorts of trouble. Now it's going to be some homo going to have to get a job because I can't do nothing about it. Well, Ray, this this is, uh, you know, we're looking at uh, immutable character, uh, characteristics here. Uh, we cannot change one's skin color. One can change from homosexual uh, behavior, the lifestyle, the uh, the, the preferences that are that are there, um, and uh, th- there's not an equation be- between the two. And I guess, sadly, Dr. Cameron, that's what many are making it out to be, that this is just like like one's race, that you, c- you can't, you know, have discretion in one way or the other. And uh, so often many are pe- people are mis- mistaking uh, using race as a means to bring about uh, special rights for homosexuals. Yeah, and I, I think this is uh, the, the whole thought process uh, brings in question uh, the civil rights kinds of mentality. Uh, unfortunately, I partially agree with your caller that what you have is instead of trying to enforce equal rights, and uh, instead we gave special rights on the basis of certain characteristics, which extended not only to blacks but to women. And uh, now that that's being extended to um, 
real minorities, women were called a minority, even though they're a majority, um, transgenders, uh, people that are really strange. Uh, I just dealt with um, a church in which uh, the young man uh, who was caught uh, runs around trying to sniff uh, dirty socks. Uh, that's his sexual orientation. Uh, that's a real pain in the whatever. Fortunately, there are only a few thousand such people in the U- U.S. So far, they haven't called for special rights or privileges uh, to make sure that we can't do anything about them. But that's a, that's a place we're headed. We're headed to a place where the weirder the people, the more rights they will obtain. And the more normal you are, uh, the fewer rights you will have, except the right to pay for their operations or their predilections or whatever. And some of the very same arguments that have been utilized for the same-sex marriage are what we are hearing utilized for the promotion of matters like polygamy. Yes. And, of course, uh, at least with polygamy, you get children. A society that is polygamous still has children. It still has a future. Uh, When Jesus came, the world was polygamous. Jesus said, one man, one woman, and Christianity brought that transformation, which, by the way, was opposed vigorously by the Jews, vigorously by many of the Romans, etc. Let's go to Mitchell, South Dakota. Tim, you're on the air. Thanks for calling. Hi. I just wanted to uh, bring to your attention when my wife went to school as a nurse, Back in the early 80s, it said in her medical book that uh, homosexuality, lesbianism, was a mental disorder. And I I find that interesting. Yeah, I think it's still, uh, I think it's reasonable to regard it as a mental illness. Uh, It's always hard to say what is a mental illness. But it certainly has all the hallmarks. That is, uh, if you look at the American Psychiatric Association's statement about what a mental disturbance is, it includes that it disturbs you and that it shortens your lifespan or makes you less healthy or uh, gets you into trouble. Uh, those who engage in homosexuality or transgenderism or <laughs> smelling socks, uh, all these things uh, make your life more difficult. And it's reasonable to regard such people as being mentally deranged or mentally troubled. Um, they were right then. Uh, It's still right today, but uh, we have this notion that civil rights trumps any kind of danger you pose to yourself or others. A new political correctness. Hmm. Thank you, Tim. Appreciate your call. Uh, To Ohio, Trish, you're on the air. Yes, I'll ask my question and then hang up. Um, Dr. Cameron, do you have any idea what the real agenda of the announcement by the president might have been yesterday? I'm a little suspicious of it since he knew it uh, would be political suicide. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Well, you ask a great question, and I'm not uh, smart enough to know why he would do such a, what I regard as a politically stupid thing. Now, remember, he's not enforcing the law. He's saying that DOMA, the Defense of Marriage Act, uh, passed by Congress, signed by President Clinton, and so forth. He's just not going to enforce it. That already is an affront to uh, what was a duly constituted order by our government. I hope, I don't think he has enough time to do anything really radical here. But mark my words uh, clearly, the long-term goal of the homosexual movement is to get every little boy to grab his ankles and every little girl to give it a try. They will not rest until every one of our children at least gets to try, has the opportunity, and maybe is forced to at least once experience homosexual acts. Hmm. There is there's no retreating from that. They've made it very clear earlier on. Now they don't talk about it. But uh, that's what they want. They will not be happy until they get it. Marriage is just a step along the way. To West Dallas, Wisconsin. Sylvia, thank you for calling Crosstalk. I am responding to Dr. Cameron's um, message that the, that the gay uh, legislation initiates at the state level. Just to inform people of Wisconsin, since I am in Wisconsin, that uh, there are special uh, initiated gay legislation initiated by our mayoral um, uh, candidate for the, for t- fighting against Walker. His name is Tom Barrett, 
and he and he and the mayor of Madison support the gays. Um, we have a um, there's a possibility that we will have uh, support for gay marriage in Wisconsin if uh, um, we elect uh, Tom Barrett as our new governor. That's all. Yes, e- even as you speak. I'm, I'm talking to you from uh, Colorado, in which our Democrat governor, governor has called for a special session of the legislature, which did not pass civil unions, and now he wants it. Well, um, you see what I mean, uh, that uh, homosexuality is the only uh, sin or only bad habit that I can think of that is 24-7, all homosexuality, all the time. It's almost, I realize they have to eat, they have to sleep, they have to breathe, but homosexuality is a consuming habit. And the people who engage in it seem to have almost no room in their cranium for anything but. I appreciate Thank you, Dr. Cameron. Thank you for your call here. And uh, you're exactly right. There's a vast difference between our standing governor, Scott Walker, and... uh, uh, his uh, new challenger in the recall election, Tom Barrett, as uh, Mayor Barrett of Milwaukee, actually signed uh, uh, a document on freedom to marry, uh, b- promoting same-sex marriage. And uh, as as the mayor, he joined other mayors in signing such a declaration here across the nation. To uh, Tom, you're our next caller. Go ahead. Uh, thanks for calling Crosstalk. Yes, uh, the, the, he t- mentioned something about the teachers. I really believe we need to get local control of our schools. We need to get rid of the Federal Department of Education and the, and the State Department of Public Construction. These are bureaucracies that are costing the taxpayers a fortune. And, I, and, and when they have something like that, what they're really saying is that, is that we, as teachers and, and school administrators and, and the, the school boards, that, that we're not capable of running our own schools. And I think if, a, if the local school does not want to teach homosexuality and tolerance and all that stuff, they should have the right to be able to say, no, let's concentrate on math and English and other skills. And I'll take yeah, the I, I, I could see your point. I could agree with you, but I don't think, I think the horse is out of that barn. I don't think we can do anything um, to eliminate. We may be able to shrink the bureaucracies to some degree. I'm more concerned that we tell teachers the truth, that we teach the truth about homosexuality, how dangerous it is, how captivating it is, how aimed at children, our children it is. And if they got that information, I could live with a bureaucracy because, hey, we've been living. It's going to continue, I'm afraid. Mm. Appreciate your call here. Our number, 800-733-9829. We're just seconds away from a break, so uh, David, hang on the line. You'll be next. And Joe, uh, here calling into Crosstalk today. Dr. Paul Cameron is our guest. Website, Family Research Inst. That's I-N-S-T dot O-R-G, standing for the Family Research Institute. We'll be back in one minute. You're listening to Crosstalk on VCY America. For the Worldview Weekend Minute, I'm Brandon House. Our website is worldviewweekend.com. We've been listing off 20 characteristics of false teachers embraced by the false church. Number seven is false teachers appeal to the flesh and sin nature of people. We see that in 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 18, where it says, For when they speak great swelling words of emptiness, they allure through the lust of the flesh, through lewdness, the ones who have actually escaped from those who live in error. The words actually escaped is better translated trying to escape or barely escaping. Sadly, false teachers use the flesh, it says. What? Allure through the lust of the flesh, Second Peter 2.18. People who are trying to escape, trying to escape their sin, their lifestyle of destruction. But what is drawing them back in, unfortunately, is false teachers who are appealing to their flesh. That's certainly not a solution for them at all. And that's one of the dangers of false teachers. Our website, worldviewweekend.com.
You're listening to Crosstalk on VCY America as we're speaking today with the chairman of the Family Research Institute, Dr. Paul Cameron. And uh, he has often lectured uh, on this, on like issues. He's authored many, many scientific articles, uh, written books, The Gay 90s, Exposing the AIDS Scandals. Uh, he has been declared the most dangerous man in America by The Advocate, a gay magazine, and uh, talking about the advancements of the LGBT agenda specifically as it relates to the president's announcement yesterday. Uh, also, the matter is going on in a number of states and in Kansas right now being targeted for uh, LGBT uh, advancements, uh, state of California, and and we're witnessing as well a growing number of mayors that are signing on to this uh, Freedom to Marry petition as well, including, as the previous caller pointed out, Mayor Tom Barrett of Milwaukee, who is running for governor for the state of Wisconsin, uh, declaring his uh, support for same-sex marriage. Uh, Dr. Cameron, is there more behind the scenes on what we know on this issue? Yes. I, let's think about the future. We've got to have kids. We've got to have well-socialized kids. The idea that people should be free to marry, get benefits like people who produce children, who produce our future, is insane. This year, the United States passed from a point where most children now being born to younger mothers uh, under the age of 30 are being born outside of matrimony. Now, the evidence is pretty clear. Here and there, there are parents who do a miserable job of raising their kids. Here and there, there are single mothers or fathers who do a great job of raising their kids. But in the aggregate, it's clear that if you want to put your money, uh, and that's where, uh, where your mouth is, and you want a future and you want well-socialized children, you want kids being born in marriage. Anything that dilutes the value of marriage and giving benefits to homosexuals who can't do anything but corrupt the future. They cannot contribute to the future by producing well-socialized children, and they do a great deal in molesting our children and making them less able to make a future for us all, um, is insane. Let's go to Pierce, South Dakota. David, thank you for your patience. You're on the air. Uh, thanks for your program today. My question is, it's time, I, mean, I hear a lot of these things on the programs, uh, I listen quite a bit, and you know, to me it's time for Christians to, to really get out there and fight the good fight and get involved, because these people are lost and they're deceived, and so part of it is a mission field to reach them, because they're obviously uh, lost without Christ, and that is a key thing, but but with us in Romans one twenty four and on, it kind of gives a pattern of what's happening, we went from sexual revolution to homosexuality and, and, and lesbian, and now we're into this gender identity, and I'm thinking, oh, is society really, how are you going to deal with this? when there's no gender and I can change genders and I can be whatever gender. To me, that impacts. I was in Marine Corps for a while. And when you get in an environment like that where you can be any gender for the day or, you know, use whatever bathroom you feel like, it just, to me, is going to open up a whole bunch of things. And I just can't see why people are so deceived with a small population of people that the majority is just kind of like, hey, whatever you want to do. So just curious, you know, what's the best way to address this and, and to fight this um, properly as Christians, but, you know, to have a little holy, righteous uh, anger with it as well. Mm -hmm. Now, let me point out that part of the problem with the, the Christian church in the United States today is it's been psychiatricized or psychologized. Uh, we seem to think that it's our job to somehow be counselors and uh, uh, to do something to help people change. Now, the fact is that the Christian church for 2,000 years tried to and eventually got homosexuality to be made illegal. When you make it illegal, a lot of people don't go into it because it's illegal. When you make it illegal, a lot of people get out of it because it's illegal. And when you say, well, we don't want to be unkind, hey, we have to protect our children. We have to have a future. And the Christian church, until just recently, just the last few years of time, has said we must prevent homosexuality from corrupting our society, corrupting our kids. And so that's the area where I think we ought to go. If you stake your, your, your uh, efforts on trying to convert people who are into drinking heavily or drugging heavily or homosexuality, you're going to fail by far the most mm -hmm. of the time. Yeah, Some of them will come over, but you cannot. There is no known technique 
to take someone that's in a besetting sin like this and free them. Uh, but the but for the power of God, Dr. Cameron. Yes, but the Christian Church for almost 2000 years said we will we will protect the rest of society from these miscreants, mm-hmm. and we'll be kind to those who come to us individually and say, well, help me, blah, blah, blah. And that's fine. But uh, I hear, for instance, uh, uh, Christian spokespersons saying things like, well, we must be kind to the homosexuals because we must get them to come to church and listen to us, and maybe they'll convert. Good luck. Yes. Yes. Uh, sometimes, sometimes, sometimes that happens, but you're you're really running a very bad bet, and you're going way outside of mainstream Christian history. Sometimes the the, the truth hurts, doesn't it? It does. Yeah. Thank you, uh, David, uh, for your call here, and uh, certainly winning people to Jesus Christ. Uh, we wholeheartedly uh, recommend that, and Dr. Cameron has some uh, excellent thoughts that he shared here as well. Joe in Pensacola, Florida, you're on the air. Yeah, I want to make a uh, kind of a comment that, that that finally Washington D.C. has married into Hollywood. And the reason I say that is because Hollywood is so de- desensitized being gay on TV and stuff. It started yeah. out years ago as a fun little little joke. Yeah, each each time they bring it out, it was it was kind of comical. They made it a nice, cute little thing out of it. Now and now it's become a big headliner. And now eventually, with the, what Obama said over the Yesterday and stuff, he is married into the Hollywood situation and stuff and everything. Joe, sure. yeah, uh, yeah. Let me let me point that, out, uh, having lived there for a number of years of my childhood and a sister who works there, Hollywood is a a wash in homosexuals and homosexuality. Uh, as um, uh, who was it? Um, uh, Get about not 20, Betty Grable, but anyway, twenty uh, seconds, without, Dr. Without Cameron. gays, there is no Hollywood. Hollywood is filled with homosexual actors, actresses, and uh, writers, producers, etc. They are now being given the green light to try and propagand us, 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 to join their cause. Dr. Paul Cameron has been our guest today. Dr. Cameron, thank you for being with us. Take care. Okay, bye-bye now. Uh, Dr. Paul Cameron with us here today. And again, the website, folks, uh, that you can contact them is uh, uh, familyresearchinst.org. Thanks for joining us today here on Crosstalk. And uh, believe me, we do believe in the power of the gospel to change a life. And such were some of you. Thanks for joining us. You've been listening to Crosstalk via satellite and the Internet from BCY America. Views expressed may or may not be those of this station. For a CD of today's program, send a donation of $6 or more to VCY Tape Ministry, 3434 West Kilbourne Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, 53208. Or download by RSS or podcast from crosstalkamerica.com. And join us again for Crosstalk. Crosstalk.